U.S. soldier Desmond Doss. Desmond Doss was a remarkable U.S. Army soldier who served as a combat medic during World War II, and he is most famous for his service without ever carrying a weapon. Doss was a devout Seventh-day Adventist, and his religious beliefs prohibited him from bearing arms or taking lives. Despite this, he wanted to serve his country and save lives as a medic. His early life. Desmond Doss was born February 7, 1919 in rural Lynchburg, Virginia. He was the second son of William Thomas Doss and Bertha Edward Oliver Doss. Theirs was a simple working-class family. His father was a carpenter and his mother a shoemaker. The single most important factor influencing Doss during his formative years was his upbringing as a strict Seventh-day Adventist. Military training. From almost his first day in the army, Desmond Doss was misunderstood, ridiculed, harassed, intimidated, and almost thrown out of the service due to his religious beliefs and practices. The social upheaval in America caused by World War II was profound. Citizens from all parts of the country and extremely varied backgrounds were thrown together and forged through a crucible of hard training and discipline to mold them into fighting units. Desmond Doss is credited with saving 75 soldiers during one of the bloodiest battles of World War II in the Pacific, and he did it without ever carrying a weapon. The battle at Hacksaw Ridge on the island of Okinawa was a close combat fight with heavy weaponry. Thousands of American and Japanese soldiers were killed, and the fact that Doss survived the battle and saved so many lives has confounded and awed those who know his story. Now, he's the subject of a new film directed by Mel Gibson called Hacksaw Ridge. A quiet, skinny kid from Lynchburg, Virginia, Doss was a Seventh-day Adventist who wouldn't touch a weapon or work on the Sabbath. He enlisted in the army as a combat medic because he believed in the cause, but had vowed not to kill. The army wanted nothing to do with him. He just didn't fit into the army's model of what a good soldier would be, says Terry Benedict, who made a documentary about Doss called The Conscientious Objector. For his heroism, Doss was awarded the Medal of Honor, becoming the first conscientious objector in U.S. history to receive the nation's highest military honor. Doss's life exemplified bravery, faith, and the profound impact one individual can have even without the use of force. The escarpment where the men were fighting was a cliff roughly 400 feet high. The top 35 feet created an overhang, where the cargo nets had been necessary for the men to reach the top. For days, men of the 307th held out, fighting against heavily entrenched Japanese forces. Japanese machine gun fire was so intense one GI was decapitated. Unarmed, Doss treated the wounded under enemy fire. He had removed any markings indicating he was medic, as Japanese forces knew taking out one medic could result in the loss of more GIs who would have no one to help them. Over the next several days, Doss continually put himself in mortal danger to aid his fallen comrades. Unafraid to rush into harm's way, he worked to save the very men who had once threatened his own life. By May 5th, the fighting intensified to the point that all men were ordered to retreat. Doss refused. An estimated 75 men remained behind, too wounded to retreat under their own power. He would not leave them behind. Doss successfully rescued 75 men trapped at the top of the escarpment by lowering them with a special knot he knew. He had miraculously not been wounded and stayed in the fight with B Company. The army made Doss life hell during training. It started out as harassment and then it became abusive, Benedict says. He interviewed several World War II veterans who were in Doss Battalion. They considered him a pest, questioned his sincerity and threw shoes at him while he prayed. They just saw him as a slacker, the filmmaker says, someone who shouldn't have been allowed in the army, and somebody who was their weakest link in the chain. Doss commanding officer, Captain Jack Glover, tried to get him transferred. In the documentary, Glover says Doss told him, Don't ever doubt my courage because I will be right by your side saving life while you take life. Glover's response, You're not going to be by my damn side if you don't have a gun. On May 21st, Doss was wounded several times by grenade fragments and a sniper's bullet through his arm. He continued to put others first, refusing treatment before those more seriously wounded. Due to his extensive wounds, Doss was evacuated in late May. 
He returned home, but spent years recovering from his wounds and from tuberculosis, which he had caught in Leyte. On October 12, 1945, President Harry S. Truman presented Doss with the Medal of Honor in a ceremony on the White House lawn. Truman shook Doss's hand and told him, I'm proud of you. You really deserve this. I consider this a greater honor than being president. Doss was the first and only conscientious objector to receive the Medal of Honor during World War II. Of the honor Doss said, I feel that I received the Congressional Medal of Honor because I kept the golden rule that we read in Matthew 7 verse 12. All things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. Desmond Doss was a corporal and medic in the United States Army during World War II who became famous for his courage despite being a conscientious objector. A staunch Seventh-day Adventist, Doss refused to carry or use a weapon, but bravely saved lives on the battlefield as a medic. His most famous feat occurred during the Battle of Okinawa in 1945, when he rescued about 75 soldiers from a steep ridge under heavy enemy fire. For this, he became the first conscientious objector to be awarded the Medal of Honor. His story was later depicted in the film Hacksaw Ridge, 2016. Doss's actions were an example of extraordinary courage and compassion, making him an enduring symbol of faith and selflessness in military service. After World War II, Desmond Doss sought to continue his carpentry career but was unable due to severe damage to his arm. In 1946, he was diagnosed with tuberculosis, which required five and a half years of treatment, during which he lost a lung and five ribs, resulting in 90% disability. An antibiotic overdose in 1976 left him completely deaf, though he regained hearing in 1988 with a cochlear implant. Despite his health issues, Doss raised a family in Rising Fawn, Georgia. He married Dorothy Schutte in 1942, and they had one son, Desmond Jr., in 1946. Dorothy passed in 1991, and Doss remarried Frances May Duman in 1993. Doss died on March 23, 2006, in Piedmont, Alabama, and was buried in Chattanooga National Cemetery. Thank you for being to the end of the video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and tell us what you think about this video below in the comment section. Let's meet again with another interesting video.